So once you've had a think about all of that and you're considering applying, here is some advice about how to do your research and how to maximize your chance of getting into the deanery you apply to. So the first thing that I did was I made a table of questions and these questions were to ask to people when I would ring them up for advice. So I would either call them or I would meet them in person and I would just go through this list of questions that I had and I would write down these people's answers in this table. And this is really good because sometimes I was talking to these people a month or two months before I needed to access this information again and so just having it written down meant that I didn't have to call them up again or continuously harass them for advice. I had it there and I could access it again and again when I needed it. So what I've done to help you is I've created this bundle of resources of things that I found to be really useful and this document is one of them. It's the exact same table that I use and it's a Word document so you can edit it and add your own questions in there, you can type in people's answers, all that sort of stuff and it's totally free. I'm not trying to take anyone's money. I literally just wanted to be able to give this information to someone so that it can help. So I'll put a link below to where you can download all these documents, one of which being this table that I used. So once I had created this table, I made sure to speak to as many people as possible that I knew had either applied for an AFP or had done one or was currently still doing one. And then in turn, they pointed me in the direction of other people who are currently doing one or had already applied for one. So I kind of built my network and got to get advice from a whole host of different people. When I was talking to people, one thing that I thought was really important was to talk to people who had applied to the deaneries that I was interested in. And this might sound really basic, but the reason why I did this is because I wanted to get a feel for the kind of applicant that was successful in these deaneries. So I feel like applying for an AFP is very similar to applying to medical school. Like there's such a variety between what each school is looking for and the ways in which schools choose applicants is not always explicitly written anywhere. So in order to get a good understanding of this, it's really good to look to people who were successful to see what the strengths of their application were and see if that aligns with what yours are. Another great reason why talking to previous applicants is a great source of knowledge is that often interview questions get recycled. If you're asking people, you know, what questions did you find difficult at interview? What questions did you struggle with? And then you go away and you prepare those, you might get super lucky and find that actually on the day of your interview, you get asked that exact same question. And so you've had time to prepare this and you're going to come away looking so, so good in the eyes of the interviewer. So another thing that I did was I got in touch with my university careers team. So I went to them first to have a chat about my options and then I went through my white space questions with them and they even offered things like interview practice so they can be a really valuable resource that a lot of people don't use and I think we were quite lucky in my university that our university careers team was super proactive they came to find us and they were at multiple events telling us that they can help us but with things like writing white space question answers and preparing for interviews they require quite generic skills that even if your university careers team isn't specifically trained to help you apply for an AFP they still know how to help you prep for an interview and how to get you to write answers in a star format, for example. And so they can still be really, really valuable. Another thing that I did was I attended all the free events that were organized by my university careers team and by my academic medicine society. So again, like I said, I was super lucky that they were very proactive and there were a lot of events going on at my university. But if you aren't in that position, another thing that you can do is go onto Facebook and have a look at the Academic Medicine Society pages for nearby universities, see if they've got anything going on. And if you ask them nicely, they might let you come along. And even better, if you have the time, and if your university doesn't already have an Academic Medicine Society, you could be the one to start it and organize an AFP evening for your university. The more of these events that you attend, the more familiar faces you see, whether they're students who are also applying with you, or current trainees or past trainees. And it's really important to keep talking to these people and keep those channels open because you have no idea what useful piece of information is gonna come along and be that difference between you getting that job and not. The next thing that I did was I spent a lot of time looking through deanery websites and there were a lot of things that I was looking for, but specifically I'll read out a couple of those things that I was looking at. So I was looking for the structure of their program, the trainee testimonials, the research and teaching interests of those institutions, the available job combinations, the opportunities available for extra learning and research, the ability to choose your own project, and funding available for extra qualifications or conferences or courses. So that's quite a long list of things that I was looking at. And to be honest, there were probably a few other things that I forgot to mention on this list. But basically, as I said before, all these deaneries are quite different, not just in how they structure their AFP, but also in all of the extra things you get alongside being an academic trainee and any specific things that would benefit you from being in that particular institution. But last thing that I did when I was thinking about which academic deaneries to apply to 
was I looked at the white space questions. So these get published by UKFPO a few months before your actual deadline. So they should come out in, what, what month do they come out, say October? They should come out in July or August time. So they're not out for this year yet, but I've got some examples of white space questions. I'll get onto them slightly later when I talk about white space questions. But basically the reason why I found it useful to look at the white space questions in advance was because it gave me a lot of insight into the kind of applicant they were looking for. So for example, one of Cambridge's questions was something to do with the Higgs boson particle and like how you could relate it to medicine. Now, I don't really sit around thinking about how I can relate the Higgs boson particle to medicine. I'm sure it's amazing if you do that. You're clearly on another level to me but that wasn't really the type of applicant I would be and so that kind of gave me an indication as to the fact that I may not be able to write the strongest application for that deanery. On the other hand, London didn't have any white space questions and so they were going to decide whether or not I got an interview purely based upon my score and my publications, of which I had none, you know, my presentations and prizes and blah blah blah. And so I knew that I wasn't going to get a good enough score to get an interview there, so it was kind of like a waste of an application. And even if I did get to interview, I probably still wouldn't be able to get a high enough score in total to get an offer there. So I knew that for me, my strength was going to be my white space questions. And that's because I have a lot of extracurriculars and so I can talk about those things and make myself seem interesting. And so when I looked at the white space questions, West Midlands Deanery, for example, they asked for examples of leadership and research and teamwork and things like that. And so I thought, well, that sounds like a good, well-rounded applicant. And I think I can kind of play to my strengths and write some good answers for them. And the fact that they asked for examples of all three different types of academia showed me that they want someone that is thinking about all of those three areas and is not just focused into one. And I think that kind of suited what I wanted as well. And so that's why I decided to apply there.